I hooked my arm around one of the iron or the aluminum bars that was holding on the seat in the back, the back bench, and I reach out and I grab his rucksack strap. He goes out the door. He's a 200 and some on pound dude. So for about three seconds, I am holding this soldier with one hand about 45 to 55 feet above the ground. If I let go, he dies. Hello everybody, uh, Terrence Pop here with another episode, <clears throat> live from the lair. And uh, it's Thursday, gentlemen. Uh, I've been asleep basically for the past two days. I think I'm on the back end of this fucking creeping crud that I have. I just got to clear up now and uh, I should be good to go. Now, I'm going to be talking about the new PT test. I know I've covered it a couple times in the past. And uh, I got some, <clears throat> some emails from, from some female soldiers who don't agree uh, with the new stringent physical standards that the army is now using in the, in the new PT test. Because uh, in their opinion, you know, soldiers don't do that kind of stuff on a regular basis and uh, it's completely unnecessary. Okay. I know that these female soldiers have probably been brainwashed into thinking that there is no difference between men and women and it's all a social construct that physically women can do everything men can do which is a bunch of bullshit especially when a man decides to call himself a woman and then compete against women directly they get their asses fucking handed to them across the board okay now, in my 33 years in the military, I have had to rely on my upper body strength to save my ass and save the asses of soldiers around me quite a few times. Uh, especially, uh, I've had a couple parachute drops where I was way over the fucking trees and had to basically do a one riser, double, a double one riser slip to dump enough air to make it, you know, back onto the drop zone. And I, did, I was jumping a crash 10 Charlie. So those are not very maneuverable shoots. And what you basically gotta do is grab one riser and pull it to you twice. So, you know, you gotta be pretty much hold your body weight with one arm and then grab above that with another arm and then pull it down. So you're holding your body weight pretty much with one arm. Now, I don't know many women that can do that, um, especially if you're carrying full combat equipment. So, you know, if a woman had been that far over the trees, chances are uh, she's getting a stick up the crotch, broken pelvis, lacerations, up the, you, you name it because they're, they're not going to be able to make that maneuver. I've had to do that, uh, I believe, two, two times to that extent, and then I've, I've slipped and maneuvered my chute countless times to avoid collisions and other bullshit and, and obstacles on the ground. I don't re remember all of the different times I had to do that. <clears throat> okay, another one, and this one actually saved my life. A second Ranger Battalion. We were in a, uh, a shit hook, which is basically a big helicopter with the two propellers. And uh, we were fast roping. I was in the middle of the stick and it's dark and there's a little chem light at the top of the rope. And we're all like, you know, you walk down there, you grab the rope and then you go. So it's literally, there is no break. It's boom, 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 boom. Well, I get to the end of the ramp, I'm reaching out for the rope, and the shit hook, I don't know, took a bump, and I missed the fucking rope. I am now falling 60 feet. 
to the ground. I fell about uh, 20 feet and I grabbed onto this guy's rucksack who just happened to be the big corn fed dude on our floor, last name Hess. The same guy who split my door from the bottom all the way up to the top frame by putting his hip into it. And uh, Hess was strong enough to absorb my free fall weight grabbing onto his rucksack and not be pulled free of the rope and bring him and me to the ground. He was mad as hell and his neck was all jacked up from, uh, you know, his equipment being, you know, you know, put up around his neck. But, you know, what are you gonna do? Is either that or fall to my death or grievous bodily injury. Because I don't know if we were at the full 60 feet. Normally it's like 40 or something. But still, that's four stories. <clears throat> I was strong enough to actually maintain a hold on onto his rucksack frame. And he was strong enough to bring his body weight, his equipment, my body weight, and my equipment to the ground. Now, if I had fallen off that rope and grabbed onto a female's rucksack, she would have been stripped off that rope and both of us would have fell to our deaths or severe bodily injuries. <clears throat> now, was that one of my finest moments? No, no, it wasn't, but it was an accident. It happened. Uh, my platoon sergeant did the right thing. Uh, didn't really blow a gasket over it. And uh, I believe the next day we were fast roping again and he put me at the front of the stick so, you know, I wouldn't fucking freeze up and fuck up or anything, which, you know, if you fall off the horse, you get right back on it. So that was, that was done correctly. And, and, and shit fucking happens, you know. You got guys doing stuff in the dark at full combat speed. Things, things happen, you know. And that's not the first time We've had a dog pile at the bottom of a fast rope. In fact, the first couple dozen times we did it, the whole platoon was pretty much just a pile of arms and legs writhing on the ground with equipment and fucking sucked. But as you get better at it, you know, things happen. Zuck the cuck drinks water like a duck, but he also drinks your data. So tell him and Google to shove your data up their schwing schwangs by downloading the Brave browser. It's free, blocks online advertising, and protects your privacy and data from evil tech companies. You only see ads if you want to see them, and you get cryptocurrency for your attention. Don't let Zuck use you to make a buck. Download Brave by clicking on the link down below. Next one. <clears throat> We're down in the land which is south of the United States doing stuff for people. We were in a Huey helicopter. They had taken out a lot of the you know benches and shit in the middle, and there was a bench on each side this way, but the, the floor was open for the most part. We we're coming down to land. It was dark, and uh, apparently, there was some kind of issue. They had a hard time with their navigating, I don't know, but they, they thought that uh, the top of the triple, key, triple canopy jungle was the ground. So they came down and they were f like basically hovering just above the trees. And we, we get the bailout order and I go, go, go. So, you know, one guy stands up, recognizes what's going on, and just yells, stop. I'm on the floor. You know, I was sliding towards the door to, to, to get out. I stop. And then the pilot realizes that he's fucked up. So he flares up, and the helicopter does about a 30 to 40 degree, you know, tilt. Everybody grabs onto shit except one of my buddies. He is going right for the open chopper door. He's gonna fall through the triple canopy jungle and probably die. I have no choice. I hooked my arm around one of the iron or the aluminum bars that was holding on the seat in the back 
the back bench, and I reach out and I grab his rucksack strap. He goes out the door. He's a 200 and some on pound dude. Now this is before body armor days or any of that shit, but still he's a heavy motherfucker. So for about three seconds, I am holding this soldier with one hand about 45 to 55 feet above the ground. If I let go, he dies. Now I felt my shoulder separate and it hurt like hell. But you get to that point where you're like, okay, it's pain. I can either acknowledge the pain and this guy dies or I can work through the pain and save this guy's life. I worked through it. I held him for the three seconds. The chopper comes back up and then a couple other guys grabbed him and hauled him back into the bird. <clears throat> and then we went, we went over to our, um, our LZ, got out and we Charlie mic'd. My arm and shoulder were swelled up for about three weeks. Um, it didn't need to get put back in socket or anything. It was just incredibly mangled. And uh, to this day, my shoulder still bothers me a lot. You know, I, I have to do all those little bullshit exercises and work on the rotator cuff muscles and shit and the tendons. And it'll probably never, it's never going to heal. I mean, it's been 30 plus, 30 some odd years and, you know, 20, 27 years, I don't know, something like that. It's, it is what it is. If I had not been there and that would have been a female soldier, that guy'd be dead or grievously injured. And even if that female soldier did grab him, I don't think she could have held it or she would have been pulled down too. So, I mean, upper body strength is fucking needed. I mean, oh my God. All right, here's another one. Let's see, uh, that's the chopper grab. All right, rock climbing, yeah, mountaineering. Yeah, I fucking hate that shit. All right, ranger school. We are climbing up. It's not an actual cliff that goes straight down, but it's at a very steep angle. And you, you snap into the rope, you go up, you unhook, you hook into the next one, you go, you know, up and you walk up the side on the on the rocks to make sure that uh, you know you, you complete the task and everyone gets to the top safely. I'm about one third from the top, and uh, one of the guys at the top unhooks his snap link. He's scrambling up to the top, loses his footing. Shit happens. And he starts coming down. Now, it's daylight. I see what's happening. I watched two or three other rangers get out of this guy's way and just let him keep fucking coming down. The guy in front of me grabs him and slows down and gets to me. I grab onto him. And then the guy behind me grabs onto him. And finally, one of our ropes comes to the end and we jerk to a stop. We hook him back in. And then all of us make it to the top where we were promptly all smoked by the RIs for being dumbasses. What are you gonna do? If, if it took three of us to stop this guy, if, if we didn't do that, he probably would have kept going and been severely injured or possibly even killed. All right, this next one's repelling. All right, we're, we're repelling down a rock face. It was about 100, maybe 100 feet high. And this, this is straight up and down. Okay, there's a couple little ledges and shit. There's three ropes. I'm coming down. The rope next to me, it's about 20 feet over. There's two ropes. I don't know what happened. Maybe one of the guy's snap links heated up too much, but it, it melted. It, it, it was melting through the rope. And... Uh, I had to basically fucking swing over there, grab him with my legs while holding onto the fucking thing. He grabs onto me and then I rappel down, you know, with my body weight and his body weight the rest of the way down my rope, you know, and I mean, shit like that happens. I mean, these women don't have that kind of upper body strength that they can just throw around willy nilly. 
I mean, are there power lifter women out there that can do stuff like that? Yes, there is. I'm sure there is. But there are so few. You know, I mean, for a woman to get that kind of upper body strength, she probably has to power lift for a large portion of her of her life. And most and most men can you know, can summon that kind of strength without having to do that for you know that amount of work for that long. You know, and and if a, a man decides he wants to to do that kind of weightlifting, he gets even stronger. So to those female soldiers out there who think that all of those upper body strength exercises and bullshit are not necessary for the military, you're out of your goddamn mind. Just straight up out of your goddamn mind. Not only, I mean, a combat soldier, you have to have good endurance. You have to have reasonable, you know, leg strength. Decent upper body strength. You have to be able to take an ass load of pain, misery, hopelessness, go without food, sleep, or any of the creature comforts as long as it takes to complete the mission. And I really can't think of any woman, any woman out there that can do that. Of course, this is just my opinion from my own personal experience. But what the hell do I know, huh? Anyway, that's me, gentlemen. Take it easy.